Hey everybody, we are back from a long hiatus because we have some new console news, something we absolutely love talking about on this channel. Well, what am I talking about exactly? What new console is it? Not the PS5, not the Xbox 785,000, not a new modern sleeker a Nintendo Switch, no. We have a new handheld console, that's right, handheld console called the Playdate. Now, if you've seen the play date and you're seeing some of it here on screen, some of it looks pretty traditional in terms of a handheld. You've got a D-pad, you've got two buttons, B and A, they're kind of horizontally lined, which is something I don't like on a handheld because growing up with those kind of slanted uh, B and A buttons is something that I like. you got a little screen and some doodads or sound and whatnot. Cool little console, but it's got a special feature if you see on the right side, there's a little silver slab. Now what that little silver slab or tab thing is, is a hand crank. That's right, it is a hand crank. You might have seen something like this before if you have uh, a radio or a flashlight for emergencies and you kind of crank it to create the electricity uh, to play or to light up your flashlight or to play your radio. Now, that's not what this is uh, in itself. I know it kind of looks like that. That's what I thought it was at first, to power this device. But no, we'll touch on that here in a second, what that does. So, first, it, it's yellow, so it's bright, right? You're going to be able to see it wherever you go. It fits in your pocket, of course, because it's portable. The screen itself is not uh, something high-res. It's intentionally kept low. It's a black and white screen. Now, the company themselves are saying that this isn't going to be, you know, some cheapy little handheld that you're going to get for like 20, 30 bucks. Like you can right now with some LCD screens and, and you know, a knockoff Game Boy sort of thing. Uh, but it's not going to be something crazy expensive on the line of, say, uh, a Nintendo Switch or probably even a 3D, 2DS. Nothing like that. Uh, the company themselves aren't new to the business. They are new to the handheld market, though. Uh, Panic is the ones behind this. They've had about 20 or so years working in software for Mac and iOS and, and lots of other things. You probably best know them for the publishing uh, house they opened up, which released games like Firewatch a couple of years back, which was really good, uh, and the Untitled Goose game that's just around the corner, which is a wild-looking game. So the play date itself, why... Is it called Play Day? Why did they decide to, to do a console? Uh, really? Because because they could. <laughs> because they, they wanted to. Uh, and they thought long and hard about this, so it's not just going to be released uh, flat and then go out to the world and then kind of disappear. They've reached out to designers and game developers and, and people that you probably know of and asked them, Hey, do you want to do something for this console? Do you want to create for this console? Uh, and they said yes. So... Off the bat, they have 12 original, totally original games dropping for the play date. The model they have right now is that they're going to release one game a week. So for 12 weeks, you're going to get 12 games. Now, not all the games are going to be complete epic RPG adventures. Don't expect that. Uh, some are going to be long, short, experimental, more traditional, whatever you want to do. Um... Uh, and this works with their game delivery system. We don't know much about it yet, uh, but we can expect that it's going to have some sort of service where they just get downloaded to the device or maybe swapped something almost maybe like the satellite SNES was or uh, the Sega channel was back in the day. Now, the crank. We'll come back to that crank. This is what makes the play date interesting in a gameplay perspective. Is it a gimmick? Absolutely. Could it offer unique games and gameplay elements? Absolutely. It really depends on the developers. Nintendo is a company that knows something about weird kind of technology. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Eventually, you get something that sticks. Now, the crank itself works like a st standard crank. It flips out from the side and it rotates, um, rotates the analog controller uh, and it puts a spin on the game as they call it now. They've already announced a couple games that are going to be Crank exclusive. Uh, one is called Crankin' Times Travel Adventure. Uh, and it, it looks like a kind of 2D basic affair. 
Don't know much about the screen. We know it's in black and white, and it does remind me of the quality you get on, say, a Kindle Paperwhite. Something along those lines, very kind of bright uh, and easy to see outside, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, but something very plain and basic. So we know the price point for right now. They're saying it's going to be about 150 so it's going to be on par with, with a 3DS uh, in that area. Uh, far less, of course, than a new console or anything like that. Uh, they're going to break up the games, like I said, 12. Uh, but they're going to do them by season. So, so season 1 is going to have all 12 games included at no charge. Uh, and then you'll probably have something, you know, like a subscription fee or something, uh, if it continues to work out for season 2. Think of it like a season pass uh, in a video game. We know it's going to drop in early 2020. Uh, we know a console does exist because they're testing it. No word if they're going to be at E3 next month. We'll be there. So we will be keeping an eye out if the Playdate console will be there to see if we can get our hands on it. It's small. It's small, at least from the test shots that we've seen. Um, how would I describe it? It's It's square. So it's it's very it's strange to describe it size wise, um, maybe width wise and height wise is equal. So think of like putting two credit cards together, uh, and the thickness of, say, I don't know, a cell phone, right? So fairly small, fairly unique, but we don't know uh, spec wise what it's running, how these things are are working. Um, what is the output for this thing? So all we know is, the, is some of the basics right now, and it's still pretty early uh, along development lines in the prototype phase, or at least a, a at least a playable phase if they're going to hit at twenty early twenty twenty, whatever that means. Essentially, these things tend to always get pushed back. Anyways, now they built this entire thing from scratch. They say using their own OS, using their own SDK. It supports C and Lua development, uh, a, a Mac-based simulator and debugger, a bunch more. So it does seem like, even though it, it looks like a low-res sort of thing, that there's a lot of tech, at least, behind it, which is pretty cool. So, that's all the news we have, at least right now, on the Playdate. There is a feature in Edge Magazine. So if you still are the magazine type, you can head over and pick up Edge Magazine. We've got more information on our website over at GambitMag.com. Uh, we'll be following along as this news develops. It looks interesting. At the very, very, very least, um, I mean, it's big enough to get buzz. Uh, it, it is the cover story on Edge Magazine, which is a big deal. So you're going to start seeing this all over the internet on your favorite gaming sites and as well as regular uh, tech media sites. Because something like this, it's always cool when someone comes in and kind of tries to disrupt the market that essentially has belonged to Nintendo. Uh, and still does, essentially, with the Nintendo Switch. So we'll see what more Panic announces about the play date. Uh, when footage, actual footage, we've seen some, some, I guess, GIFs on their website about the game that they were talking about, that time travel game, uh, to show off the crank. Um, but that's, that's really it. The dimensions are thin. It's cool. It's yellow. It's got a small screen. Um, they say it's a low-power LCD. Um, it's black and white, of course. The resolution is, I think, 400 by 240. So when you look at it, you think Kindle Paperwhite or you think kind of classic Game Boy. Uh, but the press release that we got says it's got no grid lines or that. It's got no blurring. It's really sharp and clear. And it's, it's much higher res than what you would expect by just seeing it uh, kind of in still form. They say, <laughs> now they're calling it a premium black and white screen. What that means, we don't know. But it should be high quality because they also stated in the press release that we got earlier this morning that there is no backlight in this thing. Uh, that is always a concern because unlit uh, console, portable consoles, we've all grown up with stuff like that. If you can remember back, the original Game Boy was a nightmare to see. The original GBA was a nightmare to see. Anything that wasn't backlit was pretty much a nightmare to see. Now they have some sort of technology built in, reflective layers that make it look great. Um, 
And then, but granted, we're talking about 150 bucks. They say that at night you can sit by some sort of lamp or reading lamp to kind of get a really good look at it. Concerning, a little bit, a little bit, uh, but it really depends on what type of games are being designed around this thing and what is the market it's actually for. Don't expect 20, 30 hour games. Don't expect big RPGs. Don't expect stuff like that. It does seem like a more quirky console, which $150, you know, I mean, the crank is cool, but you're, you're asking for a lot uh, and leaving out a lot of basics. So it's really interesting. Again, we don't know what's inside it. They say it's beefy in terms of RAM and, and CPU. So we'll have to see. So stay tuned here. Uh, subscribe here for more new console and, and tech news of that nature. If you want daily news, we're always writing every day. We're always releasing content over on GamingMag.com, or you can follow us over on Facebook and join the 15,000 other people uh, that get our content in their feed every single day. So, until next time, we will catch you all later. Have a good one, and bye-bye.